Hey, future respiratory therapist, interesting thing here. I put out a video a um, couple days ago, and it was talked about the variables in pressure control ventilation. If you haven't watched that video, then I encourage you to do so. You'll see a link come across here at the top of the screen here. Uh, just click on that link. It'll take you to that video, and you can watch that one. Now, this is actually kind of a piggyback on that video because shortly after I posted that video, I got two questions within an hour of one another. One from Peter and one from New RRT88, and they want to know what is the initial peak pressure setting when going into pressure control. Now, the answer to this question is there's not one set peak inspiratory pressure that you're always going to start at. I think I, I mentioned this, I alluded to this in that video, but I, I obviously wasn't clear in it. So there isn't, there, it, you got to understand when you go into pressure control, you're going in with a focus to control to control airway and alveolar pressures. Okay, you probably were in volume control. Your peak inspiratory pressure started getting out of control. They started rising, so you said, oh, "I need to go to pressure control." Now you got to set a peak inspiratory pressure. Now don't 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 allow your mind to shift that. Oh, now I'm in pressure control, so I'm just focused on peak inspiratory pressure. Because even though you are in pressure control and you're setting a peak inspiratory pressure that's gonna be held for the set I time, your focus is still on delivered tidal volume. That's still, you can't go into pressure control and forget about volumes. Remember, tidal, I put another video out just a little bit ago that talked about minute ventilation. Respiratory rate times tidal volume. Nowhere in that formula, minute ventilation. Number one formula in my book. It's responsible for the removal of CO2. If you go to pressure control and you forget about tidal volume and minute volume, then you're failing. You're doing a, a disservice to your patient. So you go to pressure control with a focus of controlling airway pressures, but you still have to focus on tidal volumes, which is going to drive your minute volume. When I say minute volume, I'm saying the same thing as minute ventilation. Those two things, are that's responsible. Minute volume, minute ventilation, call it what you want, is responsible for CO2 removal. Now, so how do we know where to set our peak inspiratory pressure? Now, there's guidelines and there's, there's rough, rough parameters that you could say. You look, at, look it up. Some places say start at 10 centimeters of water pressure above PEEP. Some say upwards to 15 or 20 above PEEP. But the point is, is you start somewhere. Say you start at 10 centimeters of water pressure above PEEP. You have then, you must then assess your return tidal volume because that's going to tell you what your next move is. Remember, just because we're in pressure control, our goals for tidal volumes are still 6 to 8 mLs per kilo. Now, if you're dealing with ARDS or acute status asthmaticus, uh, yeah, you may drop down to 4 to 6 mLs per kilo. But for the vast majority of your patients, you're going to be talking 6 to 8 mLs per kilo is our goal. So if you put the patient in pressure control, and let's say you put them on, let's, say, let's just say they're on a peep of, let's say they're on a peep of 5. <laughs> That's a weird 5, but you get the picture, right? And you have a, uh, an inspiratory pressure. Equals, let's say you start at 10. So now you're delivering 10 on top of 5. So your PIP should now be 15. And I want to talk about this further also because this is an area that you really need to know the equipment you're working with. But let's just say you're going to put 10 on top of 5. Your PIP's going to be 15. And this brings back a tidal volume that's 960. 960 mLs. And let's say our patient is 60, ideal body weight is 60 mLs. I'm sorry, 60 kilograms. Then we know that 6 to 8 would garner a tidal volume between 360 and 480. But we're getting a tidal volume of 960. That's greater than 8 mLs per kilo. What do we need to do? We need to decrease our inspiratory pressure till we get our tidal volumes in this range. If you're using four to six, then get it in that range. That would be, four would be 240 to 360. Then you decrease to get it in that range. Let's say, let's say we do the same settings, but we get back a tidal volume of 210. Well, 210 falls below our low end target range. 
So in here, in this case, we would need to increase our inspiratory pressure. And that's really all it is, guys. Six to eight mLs per kilo. Just because you go to pressure control doesn't mean you forget about tidal volume. You still have a focus on your tidal volume. In volume control, you don't pay attention to your pressures, your peak inspiratory pressures, or your plateau pressures. You can cause barrel trauma. In pressure control, you control the pressure. But if you don't pay attention to your volumes, if they get too big, you can cause volume trauma. If they're too little, you can hypoventilate your patient. This would result in a small, a little tidal volume like this, depending on what your rate is set on. You're going to have a decreased minute ventilation. Your patient's CO2 is going up and their pH is going down. Why? Because we're not ventilating this patient with an adequate tidal volume. So you go to pressure control. You start somewhere conservatively, 10 to 15, and then look at your tidal volumes and see what they tell you about your patient's lung compliance. If your tidal volumes are really small, then you probably have very stiff lungs. If your tidal volumes come back very, very high, then maybe you may be talking about a patient with, say, emphysema, where they have a very high lung compliance, static, talking static compliance. So it just, it just depends okay, on your, patient, on your patient's compliance, on your patient's airway resistance, and what pressure do you need to establish this six to eight mLs per kilo. Okay, now let me break this down. I want to show you something else because I alluded to something a minute ago and I want to talk about it real quick. Understanding your ventilators here are very, very important. Very important because they operate within pressure control slightly different. So if you're working with, let's say, the, uh, the Hamilton 840s I think the new one is the 960. If you're working with the Servo I, if you're working with the Avia, just to name a few, then when you set your peak inspiratory pressure, you're actually setting your delta P. So when you set your inspiratory pressure on your 840, your Servo I, your Avia, if you're on a peep of five, and you set your, I'm gonna take this P away, and we're just gonna call it inspiratory pressure. And you set this, or your delta P, you set this at 20, then your pips are gonna come in at 25 because you're setting your delta P. This delta P is what's gonna drive your tidal volumes. This is important because if you come back and increase your Let's say you increase peak to 10, then your peak inspiratory pressures are going to go up to 30. Okay? So you're setting your delta P. You're telling the ventilator to add this much inspiratory pressure on top of peak. Now, if you're working with, just to say, the Draegers, you have a peak of 5, and you set an inspiratory pressure of 20, then the ventilator delivers a pressure control breath up to 20. So your delta P here, your delta P is actually only 15. Now that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in this scenario like this. Your delta P is 15. Fantastic. Are your tidal volumes in range? Yes. Good. You're good. You're golden. But notice what happens. If we change our P to 10, our delta P goes down to 10. Now what happens to return volumes? They're going to go down because the driving pressure, I mean the delta P, the change, your inspiratory pressure is still set at 20. This vent says increase pressure to 20. It doesn't say add 20 centimeters of water pressure. It says increase to 20. So any change in your PEEP will decrease your delta P. So in this case, if you want a delta P of 15 and you increase your peak to 10, then you must then increase your inspiratory pressure to 25 to keep your delta P at 15. I hope that makes sense. Now that is when we're making regular changes. We go in and change the peak, you go, oh, I got to do this also. But this also brings into the formula the importance of monitoring for auto peak. Because if you're on a... Let's just say we're going back to our word. PEEP of 5, inspiratory pressure of 20. 
Your delta P is 15. Let's say this patient, for whatever reason, either, either the respiratory rate is set too high or the eye time is set too long or they develop a bronchospasm and they, become, they begin to air trap. And this leads to auto peep. Then your set peep of five with the auto peep, let's just say it rises to 8.6. Or let's leave the decimal out. Let's just say it rises to eight. Now, why did this rise to eight? Because your patient is air trapping. Results in auto peep. Auto peep on this ventilator will reduce your delta P because the vent doesn't care about peep. It says I'm cutting off at 20. So an inadvertent rise in auto peep will decrease your delta P also. And you have to understand that. Don't look at that and go, oh, my tidal arms are going down. I wonder why my tidal arms are going down. I must have a worsening static compliance. Not necessarily. You may have an increasing airway resistance, which is creating the auto peep, which is then decreasing your delta P and causing your tidal volume to be down. So in that case, maybe you don't need to increase the pressure. Maybe you need to give them a longer E time. Maybe you need to adjust your I time. Maybe you need to adjust your rate. Maybe you need to, adjust, maybe you need to address a problem with the patient. So that's what I want to talk about on top of just where to set peak inspiratory pressure, which I think we've clarified. You set it and you maneuver and you move it to six to eight mLs per kilo. That's your goal. ARDS, other things, four to six. Got it. Beyond that, understand the equipment you're working with. Because if you work in two different places or if you work in a hospital that works with multiple ventilators, you can't treat them the same because they function differently in the way they reach that, that way they define inspiratory pressure. Is it delta P or is it a set peak inspiratory pressure? That will affect what you see on your feedback and how you make adjustments when problems arise and when you make vent changes such as PEEP. Auto PEEP will not affect this over here. Does it, is it happening? Should we fix it? Yes. But will it affect the amount of pressure that's delivered? No. Over here, if your auto peep goes up to 8, you're still giving 20. Your peak inspiratory pressures are now just going to go up on top of 8. So now you're going to have a peak inspiratory pressure of 28 instead of 25. And you need to ask yourself why. Why, why, why? That's what it's all about, guys. Hope I answered your questions, and I hope everybody's having a great day.